Third graders, we are on lesson one, three. We're going to learn a little bit about tools for mathematics. So you're going to need your math kit. And within that math kit, you have the following materials you need to get out and just take a look at. Here they are. They would include a calculator, you just need a basic calculator, what's called a template. A template allows you to trace things. It is blue. A clock, a deck of cards. One thing about this, this is a, just a soap container. If you click it, you'll be able to know that it's shut so that the cards do not fall out. You also, again, each time will need your whiteboard, your whiteboard marker, and an eraser of some sort. If you don't have an eraser, just use an old clean sock. You'll need your math journal and your pencil. So those are things that you'll need for most math days. Today, we're going to specifically be looking at the clocks. The cards are for some math games that we'll be playing. The template will be used for lessons as well as the calculator will be used for a lot of lessons. So let's start off with your whiteboard. I would like you to number one, two, three, and four on your whiteboard. I want you to use the first fact in the pair to help you solve the second. So on your whiteboard, please write what four plus four is. Write it on your whiteboard right now. What is four plus four? It's eight. So then what would four plus five be? Well, five is one more than four. One more than eight would be nine. What's six plus six? Write that on your whiteboard. Should have written 12. And seven is one more than six. So what would the answer to six plus seven be? One more than 12 is 13. Go ahead and erase number one through four again. We're going to do the same thing. You don't have to write down the problem, just write down the answer, the solution to our addition problem. It would be called a sum. When you find the answer and you add it, the answer is called a sum. Go ahead and write down the sum of seven and seven. Again, remember, if I go too fast ever, just pause the video. You can always rewind and rewatch. Seven and seven is 14. So what would seven plus six be if six is one less than that? Write down the answer. Well, one less than six, seven is six, so the answer would be one less than the sum in the first one, so one less is 13. Number three, write down the sum of eight and eight. Write it on your whiteboard. 16, and our second add-in is one less than eight, it is seven. So what would our sum be of eight and seven? Write it on your whiteboard. One less than 16 would be 15. So sometimes knowing facts will help us know other facts as well. Go ahead and erase your whiteboard and let's do this one more time. Number one to four. and write down the sum of five and five. Write it on your whiteboard. Five plus five is 10. Now this second number is two more than five. So what would our answer be to the second? Five plus seven is two more than 10 would be 12. Next to number three, write the sum of six and six. Six plus six is 
12. The second number we're adding to six in question number four is two more than that. So what would our answer be? The sum would be two more. 14. Go ahead and erase. I want you to take a look at your yellow clock. So I have that in front of you as we work through the lesson today. We're going to be working on reviewing telling time. You have two clock faces here. What time does the first clock say? You can write it on your whiteboard. And then for number two, what time does that clock say? Well, the first one shows two o'clock. Notice the hour hand is a little bit shorter than what we call the minute hand. Write down the time for clock number two. It would be three o'clock. The hour hand is shorter and a little bit thicker on this one. And the minute hand is up at the top. time does my clock show now? The shorter hand, the hour hand, is at 4 o'clock. Now, as the minutes go past 4 o'clock, watch what happens to the shorter, the hour hand. You can see that my hour hand has moved a little bit past 4 o'clock. It's between 4 and 5. So that means the hour is still four o'clock. Each of these between 12 and one represents five minutes. Here's another five. So if I count around, each of those large numbers represents five minutes for the minute hand. You can see the minute hand is a little bit longer. So if I count five, 10, it would be 4.10. We have a 4.10 a.m., which is while you're sleeping, and we have a 4.10 p.m., a little bit after the school day is done. What time would this be? First of all, let's look at the hour hand. What two numbers is it between? It's between 4 and 5, so it still means it's 4 o'clock. And each one of these numbers represents five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. We would call this 4.30 or half past four o'clock. What time would this be? First of all, let's look at the hour hand. It's just after the six. So it's a little bit past the six. So it means it's still six o'clock. Remember, each one of these between the 12 and the 1 is worth 5 minutes. So 5, 5 more is 10. It would be 6, 10 p.m. Let's try another one. First thing we want to do is look at the hour hand, the shorter one. It's between 10 and 11. It's getting closer to 11, but it's not there yet. So it means it's 10 o'clock. And we're going to count by 5. So 5, count with me out loud. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. It would be 10, 45. Let's try one more and then we'll take a look at what the little dots mean in between. The first thing we wanna do is look at the hour. So if we notice that hour hand is shorter, it's at one o'clock. And then we count by five, starting at the 12. Five, 10, 15, 20. It is 120. Now, in between here, you will see that there are tiny, tiny little dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 
30 minutes for halfway around. So how much would be in the next half? Another 30. Each one of those little dots represents one minute. So sometimes we need to know smaller increments of time. So let's say I was doing a swimming race and I had a long distance. I might do it in one hour and four minutes. This would represent hour. This would represent minutes. So sometimes we need exact times. The Olympics goes down to hundreds and thousands of a second. So I'm gonna give you some practice and we're gonna figure out minutes. You can write these times on your whiteboard. So the first thing we're going to do, remember, is figure out how many, what hour it is, the short hour hand. It's pointing at the three. So now we can count by ones and go one, two, three, four, five. But notice we could start at five because we know that right here would be five and count up from there. Five, six, seven. It's 307. Let's try another one. All right, I want you to write down the time before I do. Figure out what hour it is and then go ahead and count the minutes. You can count the individual dots or start where you have a multiple of 10, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, the hour is between seven and eight, so it's still seven o'clock. And I see the five here and the 10 here and the 15 and the 20, so I'm not going to start counting until I get to 20. 21, 22, looks like 23. 7, 23 is the time. Let's try one more. Go ahead and write down the hour first and then the minutes. Remember, the minute hand is longer than the hour hand. Write it on your whiteboard. The hour is between five and six. So it hasn't reached six yet, so it's five. And then I notice five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Now I'm gonna count up by ones. 51, 52, 53. 553 is the time. It's only seven minutes away from being six o'clock. Let's go ahead and move into our math journal. We're in lesson one three. So again, if you need more time to get that white uh, uh, to get your math journal, go ahead and do so. We are in journal page five. And it says using mathematical tools. For problems one and two, record the time shown on the clocks. For problem three, draw the minute and hour hands to show the time. So let's go ahead and look at the hour hand. What two numbers is it between? It's between eight and nine, so it's not yet to the nine, so it's eight something. And then we count by five, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 8, 30. Number two, what's the hour? It's not quite to three o'clock yet, so it's still two. And then we count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And lastly, we're going to draw the hour and the minute hand. First of all, we need the hour six and it's about 10 minutes after. So we're gonna make it just a little bit past the six. Make sure it's the shorter of the two lines. And then 10 minutes after six o'clock. So five, 10, and make that hand a little bit longer. Next, we're going to use our ruler to measure that line segment. Do you remember the tool that you had, the template? If you turn that template on the side, 
you will see that there are inches along the side. You want to find the one that says inches. The smaller measurements say centimeters. So you're going to lay that zero down right at the start of that line. And it says, use your ruler to measure the line segment. So the beginning of the line should line up with zero. Do this with me. And it's not quite three, but it's more than two and a half. So we would say this is about three inches long. Next, number five, draw a line segment 10 centimeters long. So let's give ourselves a starting point. Let's go ahead and put a little point there. Now flip it around so you're in the centimeters. Line that zero up with the point and go all the way to the 10 and make another point. Then you can use the straight edge of that to draw yourself a straight line to connect those two points. And lastly, oh, I'm sorry, one second to last. Use your calculator. What keys do you press to make each change? You could do this two ways. You can count up from 50 by tens and say, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and then seven more. So it'd be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, plus 50, plus seven. Another way to do it is to take the ending number, 107, and on your calculator, go ahead and subtract 50 from it. On your calculator, what is 107 minus 50? 57. Number seven, enter 94, change it to 30. So if you think about it, you have to decrease, right? 94 to 84 to 74 to 64 to 54 to 44 to 34. Each of those are 10, right? And then four more. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Minus 60 and then minus four more. Here's how you could do it on your calculator. Take 94, go ahead and press 94 on your calculator. And then subtract 30 and that will give you what they subtracted. And that would be 64. One last problem. Number eight, use your pattern block template. Trace two polygons that have exactly four sides. Your template is that blue see-through. It has all of the shapes on it. You just measured with it. You could do two squares, two trapezoids. So go ahead and trace two polygons that have exactly four sides. What are the polygons that have four sides called? They're called quad rilaterals. Quad means four. If you've ever been on a chairlift skiing and there's four people, it's called a quad lift. A person who is in a wheelchair that is a quadriplegic, it means that they do not have control of their four limbs. Uh, um, what else? Uh, quadruplets. If someone had quadruplets, they would have four babies all at the same time. So the prefix quad means four.